All right, folks, here is a highly requested topic. The sword fighting from the Polish historical drama film from 1974, The Deluge, or Potop in Polish. Now, this has easily the most historically accurate and realistic sword fighting you'll ever see in any movie. There are really only a few that can compete with it. The Duelists is one of them, which I should probably do in a separate video. But if I had to pick just one for the single most realistic armed fight scene, it would have to be this. I'm not aware of any other that does it this well and pays that much attention to detail and the realities of historical combat. I think attentiveness to detail is one of the main qualities you can ascribe to the director, Jersey Hoffman. He actually consulted with fencing experts and in general just wanted to really make the scene come to life and make it very convincing. Of course, the entire movie. But the scene that I want to specifically focus on for the purpose of this video is the duel between Colonel Volodyovsky and Andrei Kmitsic. Kmitsic? I actually looked it up and I already forgot how to pronounce it. I don't speak Polish, so sorry for butchering that. I think it's Kmitsic? Obvious spoiler alert, by the way, in case you haven't guessed it, since I'm going to show a few parts of that scene here and there. However, not the end, so I'm not going to take away who wins here. I don't own a Polish saber, so I'm going to have to hold the scimitar here. I know, I know, it's the closest I have. So there are quite a number of interesting little nuances that you see during the fighting. In general, it's quite remarkable how they throw those cuts and how they perform the parries. That's exactly what you see in reconstructions of polar saber fencing. And it doesn't look like a choreography. You know, in a lot of movies, you can see that it's clearly done for a certain effect in the movie. For example, Princess Bride, which I talked about recently, is altered quite a bit in terms of fencing. Like they, they do a lot of things for the safety of the actors and for to make things look a certain way. Here, no such concerns. It almost looks like the actors themselves are fighting for real here, not just their characters. And here's an interesting quote from the actor who played Volodyovsky. At some point in the duel, I did not guard myself quickly enough, and there the heaviest of Bobrychki's swords came right towards my head. Everyone froze in terror, and I managed to cover my guard in literally a split second. But the shooting had to stop for a bit because I was pale from the emotions, and Daniel was even more upset. So they went really hard here, and I think a lot of sets and a lot of directors probably would not want to go that far to, to have them fight in with this sort of intensity. Because, I mean, to be fair, it is dangerous. It is a lot more dangerous than doing it at a greater distance with more exaggerated movements. They're swinging hard, precisely, and with intent, which is exactly what you do in a fight. And also, there, there are no wasted movements, especially on Volodyovsky's side, which is uh, explained more in detail in the novel, where it's really said that he uh, uses like, barely perceptible movements to get the job done. So this just shows his experience and his skill. You know, the more you can minimize the movement, the better it is. And one interesting thing that Volodyovsky does here is to aggressively present the point at certain times. So they go through an exchange of cuts and parries, and he just sticks out the sword to stop Kimichit's advance. And uh, this is something that it can very much be utilized. The equivalent uh, in, in German uh, historical sword fighting would be long point. The guard is referred to as long point. So it's typically done in position like this. It can be off to the side or centered either with one or two hands. And uh, so this is a way to basically make them reconsider. If the opponent just rushes at you and throws one cut after the other while closing in quickly, this is a way to make them stop in their tracks. It's not a guard that you should hang out in the entire time, which is what a lot of beginners do. They basically kind of hide behind their sword. Don't hurt me, bro, I don't want to do this. But this is really more akin to a porcupine or a hedgehog. It suddenly goes, mm-mm, you don't want to get any closer, I'm spiky, I will stick you and take your gummy bears. Wait, what? 
And even better, when Kimichi tries to beat his saber aside to open him up for an attack, he just disengages very quickly. So you can see this really effortless way. And again, the actor does a great job here. It's a very, very slight movement. That's exactly what you want. The disengage is not just done in saber fencing, but also in rapier fencing uh, to dip under the opponent's blade. So the the smaller the movement is you make, the better. You know, in the beginning, people may go way overboard and just make this giant movement, which takes too long and is too easy to see. But if instead you just you do just enough to dip under, perfect. So he really shows off his skill here. And they both show off their speed in this exchange here. So rapidly cut parry, cut parry, cut parry. Uh, what's the point of this, you may ask? Uh, this may seem like they're not getting anywhere because they're doing the same thing over and over again, but it can be useful in a fight for one to get a feel for what your opponent does, how he cuts and parries, and also basically if you're faster than the opponent, if, if you can tell that you're faster, if you just keep ramping up the speed and your opponent can't catch up, guess what? you're probably going to cut them unless they disengage and step back. So generally I have plenty to criticize in movie fights because there are lots of really weird things that are being done that serve no purpose. Here I have to really look closer to even find nitpicks. Here's one really small nitpick. So in at this moment, Kimichitz has his saber down. So he guards low and Volodyovsky actually cuts right into his blade, which really doesn't serve any purpose at that point. He's already guarding that quadrant, so it doesn't make sense to cut there, because not only does he defend against that automatically, but he can also use the force that he receives from Volodyovsky's cut to immediately power his own, which is exactly what he does here. Volodyovsky sometimes switches hands and you know, suddenly uses the saber in the left hand. That doesn't really serve any purpose other than to show off his skill, which I'm assuming is exactly the point here. He shows that, you know what? I don't even need to use my strong hand. I can just switch to my off hand in the middle of the fight and I can easily still parry you because you're a noob. Apparently this is a fight over a woman, so I guess wanting to show off here a little bit and dominating this rival is probably part of what Volodyovsky has in mind here. And Kimichitz does a few spinning cuts here. You know what I generally think about spinning in a fight. Now, he does it quickly enough that he doesn't just, you know, leisurely present his back to his opponent, like the way it's done in a lot of fantasy movies and video games. Um, and he has a bit of a, a kind of erratic way of moving in general. Uh, his, his style of moving is kind of, I would describe it as kind of flamboyant, a little arrogant, and somewhat just weird. So I think that's that's purpose here. Like he, he kind of stalks around, he, he does these these um, sort of sweeping movements, and then the the, the spinning backhand cut kind of fits in with that. Personally, I would not want to do something like that. Uh, and Volodyovsky clearly decides not to punish that here. I think he probably could. It seems like he has a skill for it. But he is clearly toying with Kimichitz here. That's, that's quite obvious. And as the fight goes on, Kimichitz gets more erratic and more, you know, frustrated. You can clearly see by the way he moves in an angrier, more desperate way and, and swinging kind of more recklessly as he, he starts to realize that he's outmatched. So yeah, that's about all I can say about this. Again, this is very a very impressive display here of skill on, on part of the actors and they're really selling this scene. Like this is easily the best that I've seen so far. There are always going to be small little things that you can nitpick here and there. But the funny thing is, if you think about it, if you record sparring, for example, like sparring, full contact sparring in HEMA or any kind of other martial art, or, you know, even if you had the option to record uh, real combat, uh, you would 
find a lot of things where afterwards you, you could look at it and be like, wait, wait why, why did you do that? That was, that was bullshit. I guess what? People make mistakes sometimes. I, I can look at my own sparring footage and pluck it apart and be like, what, what is this weird step there? And I was off balance then. What was I thinking there? And blah, this and blah, that. So taking all of that into account, I, I don't think you could do it much better than this in, in terms of fight choreography. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and entertaining. If you want to know more about Polish saber fencing, Richard Marsden is your guy. He wrote a book about the topic. It's going to be linked down below. He's also written this book here, Historical European Martial Arts and its Context. Also highly recommended. And I also have a link to Call of Athena and Purple Heart Armory, where you can find reproductions of swords, uh, Hema gear, you know, practice swords, etc., etc. Lots of good stuff. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.